inequalities. So with these you need to remember that you will solve them like a normal equation but that if you multiply or divide by a negative number that will reverse the direction of the inequality. Very important you don't forget that. So let's have a look at some examples. Here's our first one. 5x minus 3 is greater than 7. So we'll add 3 to both sides. We get 5x is greater than 10, which gives us x greater than 2. Solved in exactly the same way you would have done if this had said equals instead of greater than. Right, x minus 3 is greater than 2x plus 8. So next step level says that we're going to add 3 to both sides. x is greater than 2x plus 11. Now we are taking an, um, taking off that uh, 2x, so we get minus x is greater than 11. Now, to get rid of that being a minus x, normally you would just write, if that was an equals, you'd say minus x equals 11, so x equals minus 11. But because you're multiplying or dividing by a minus 1, in essence of doing that, then your inequality swaps, signs, uh, swaps direction. So that's saying x is less than minus 11. You could also think about this in the same way as uh, moving things across from one side to the other. So what you've actually done is moved the x to the right hand side and well the minus x to the right hand side made it positive, the 11 to the left hand side made it negative and then just rewrite it. So it's really important that you know that when you switch the signs you switch the inequality as well. Okay and we can do it with more complex ones so we multiply out the brackets and then do the same rearranging. So we end up with x less than 40 over 11. Okay, now with quadratic inequalities, uh, these ones take a little bit of practice um, and you're going to need to draw a diagram to help you out. So you will solve this as if it was an equal to zero equation to find the roots. Then you will graph it and then you will figure out which way your inequalities need to go. So let's do it for this example. x squared minus 4x is greater than 5. So let's rearrange this to look like a, a quadratic that we're used to. Now with that one we can factorise it. But we're going to use uh, the quadratic equal to 0 to find the roots. So factorise it and we get minus 5 plus 1 is equal to 0. So the roots of our equation are x equals 5 and minus 1. Now with that we can graph the um, equation so that it looks like this. It's going to go through minus 1 and 5. Now we, from our graph we can figure out which way our inequalities go with our solutions around the roots. So we're looking at that original equation where we had it greater than 0. That means looking at our graph, we're wanting to find any portions where the graph goes above 0 or above the x-axis. So we have these two parts here. So to get those bits there, we're going to the left of minus 1 and the right of 5. So to be able to write that down mathematically, we're saying x is less than minus 1 and x is more than 5. Since those are two separate regions, we have to write them as two separate statements. Right, next example. Factorise this one again as if it was equal to zero to find our roots. Draw the graph, so it's going through minus four and three over two. Now our inequality says we're looking for anywhere that it's less than zero, so anywhere that it dips below the x-axis. So it's that portion just there between minus 4 and 3 over 2. Now since this is one region, it's not two separate ones, we can actually write this one together. So minus 4 is less than x, which is less than 3 over 2. We'll do one last one just for fun. Here we have this equation, we need to rearrange it. We've got to be a little careful here um, that we don't mess up the direction of the inequality. So if we are taking that all over to the same side, we'd leave 0 on the left hand side and we'd take that 5x over to the right and make it a negative. Uh, now normally we would want the 0 on the right hand side of things and our um, quadratic on the left hand side. So to do that we just need to make sure that we keep our inequality correct. So our quadratic you can see there is going to be bigger than 0. 0 is the smaller thing so we rewrite that on the right hand side like that. Now factorise as if this was equal to 0, so we get our roots being 2 and 3. 
Now our inequality says we're looking for greater than zero, so looking at the graph we're, we've got those two sections there, which gives us that x has got to be less than 2 and x has got to be more than 3.